All right. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cultivate Advisor CEO webinar on using the assessment to recruit and lead. So if you can just jump into the chat, say hello. We want to make sure that everyone can hear me, everyone can see me. Good. We have a couple of people joining in. We have a, uh, a jam-packed day today. So I'm actually, as people are coming in here, we're going to start to catch up, but I'm just going to start to dive in to today and uh, get us moving through this awesome content that I'm really excited to bring you. So uh, good morning, everybody. Keep coming in, using the chat and check in. Quick, uh, quick note, if you if you aren't familiar, my name is Vince Crone. I'm the VP of Success here at Cultivate Advisors, working with, uh, with our clients to make sure we have a great engagement, making sure we're bringing you what you want and what you need to help you in your businesses here. So a couple quick expectations to, uh, to set this morning um, around this format here. I'm going to guide us through, uh, through the training today, walk us through uh, how to use this assessment tool in recruiting, in leadership. We're going to use a couple different polls today to pull from you that will help guide some content. And then I have a couple sub, uh, subject matter experts, Autumn and Jeremy, that will join us about midway through. We, uh, we are locked in tight for an hour today. We're going to use up the, the whole time, and we're, uh, we're going to have some uh, options uh, post-webinar that you can use to, uh, to capitalize on this learning as well. So let's dive in as to why we're here. The purpose of today is really to get a better understanding of people's behaviors and motivators. And so walking out of here today, we're going to talk to you about our Acumax Index Assessment. We're going to have an outcome of you learning how to use the basics of this tool for recruiting and leadership. So our agenda today, high level, is we're going to talk about why to use an assessment tool in general, uh, our assessment tool, Acumax Index, that we've, uh, that we've brought on. Uh, how do you actually use this tool? We're going to go through some Q&A, and then we'll save some time for takeaways and wrap-up. Your big decision to make at the end is, uh, do I apply this tool in my leadership and in, in, in my business? So uh, that, that's what we're doing today. So let's just talk to the group here. I want you to utilize the chat. As we talk about assessments here, you know, uh, you know, understanding people's, you know, people's emotions, people's attributes, people's traits is a very difficult piece. Finding an employee is almost as difficult as, uh, as putting out a dating ad and hoping you get back what you're looking for. So I want you just to reflect on your experiences, whether you've uh, recruited, whether you've led, of course, you've been recruited or led at some point in your life. I want you to utilize the chat and drop in there. What makes recruiting difficult? What makes leadership difficult? What makes collaboration difficult? difficult. Whatever comes to your mind, drop it in the chat. People, yep, onboarding, listening to others' opinions. That's a, that's a tough one, especially when you own your own business and you want to guide some of the direction. Finding qualified people, finding a talent. Yeah, different work styles. How do you merge those together and still be productive while motivating each person? Finding talent and people that can think like you and really take stuff off your shoulders. Yeah. How do you get that delegation piece in? People that think like you that you can work well with. And Julie, yeah, you said it you said it best, right? You can't control other people. And that's such a hard piece, finding the right culture, people who won't disappoint you. Keep utilizing the chat and bringing those in there. These are all great items, and these all apply to what we're talking about today. So before I dive in to this, uh, this behavioral assessment, we're going to launch a poll. Uh, just basically asking, what's your experience using a behavioral assessment? Are you familiar? Do you have any experience? Have you never used one? It's uh, it's okay either way, um, but just, we just want to know. So Paige is going to launch a poll for us here. So utilize those. Awesome. Just let everybody kind of get an answer in here real quick. Once we get uh, to about the 70% of the room, we'll uh, we'll continue here. All right. So based on some of the answers I'm seeing here, we've got it. We've got a large, uh, large portion of the group that's very familiar. And we've got a large portion that's had some experience. We've got a couple people that have never used one. It's okay. No matter where you're at on the scale of this, we're going to guide you through why we've chose the one we did and how we get the best use out of it. And if you're already familiar with these type of tools, this could be a great reminder and it could be a different, uh, a slightly different shift in uh, how this assessment tool uh, approaches, approaches this here. So, um, Awesome. So let's talk about it here. Let's talk about recruiting and leadership, how hard and expensive it is. You guys all put some great comments in the chat room here. Uh, I'm just showing a couple quick graphs here just to generalize. When you hire somebody new, 
you know, there's all these different steps that go into hiring from finding a list of names to leaving voicemails to the interview, to the paperwork, to the training and coaching, to the ongoing support. And I just put in a rough amount of uh, tasks and hours in here. And uh, in my quick math, I came up with 140 hours just to hire somebody new and get through that first 90 days. And that's, that's probably very, very low. Now think of the, the money and the time and the energy that you put into this. Are you worth 40 an hour? Are you worth 50 an hour? Are you worth 75 an hour? You know, how high does that rate go between you and the other people that collaborate to bring on somebody new into the organization? So let's just take simple math in the middle tier. If it, we average out to $50 an hour of your time, to bring on one employee is $7,000. If you want to bring on five employees throughout the year, it's 35000 just your time. If you if you want to bring on 10 employees, it's 70000 Yeah, Sebastian, it, it's definitely probably uh, probably low. I just wanted to, to play it safe, but you're right. It's probably extremely low. Now, remember, this is just your time. This doesn't include the employee's pay, productivity loss, opportunity loss, loss in culture when somebody leaves. The point is recruiting is hard and expensive. When you're going to put all this time and energy to bring somebody in, you want it to be to scale the business, not to keep playing the shell game and replacing people in the business. Okay, so that's why we're talking about why we should use an assessment tool. Now, sometimes it is cheaper to hire a senior, definitely. So when you use an assessment tool, the a big purpose behind it is to save you this time, this energy, this money, but it's also because when, when we rely on our old recruiting methods, what you see isn't always what you get. Resumes and LinkedIn are what people want you to know and what they want to share. Knowing what's behind their words is invaluable. So for example, if you go to my LinkedIn right now, you would see that I'm a public speaking people person that loves to create and connect with others. I throw the rule book out the window because I like to challenge the status quo. I am tolerant and empathetic when, when tr and I trust my gut to guide my decisions. Now, if you go look at my actual behavioral index, you would see that I'm an introvert that hates people. My tolerance level is non-existent. I never find a gray area. Give me structure or I won't perform for you at all. And also, I make my decisions based on facts and facts alone. You could take your gut feel and you could shove it. Okay, that's how we separate fact from fiction. Okay, LinkedIn, resumes, answers to interview questions. That's what people want you to hear. That's what people want you to know. The behavioral assessment tools, these indexes, these assessments help you see what's behind those words, what people can't change, what's at the core of their DNA. If you've seen the show on Netflix, Mindhunter, how they use psychological profiling, kind of doing that here, only it's Headhunter, right? We're using psychological profiling to find the right fit. Okay, and this is how we help your business grow. You've created roles, you've created jobs, you've built out these descriptions, you've, you've laid it out perfectly how you want it, you've built this glove. And now it's your job to go find the right size hand that fits that glove perfectly. But what happens? Due to time constraints, due to, to energy running out, due to a lack of candidates, here's what happens. You create this glove and then you just shove a square peg in a round hole and you don't find the perfect employee for that perfect glove. You just squeeze that hand in there and go, yeah, that'll do for now. And when that glove comes springing and flying off later, we're left going, I don't know what happened. We want to avoid that. You're putting your time and your energy in. Make sure it's to scale the business. This is what we want. You created the role. Let's go find the right fit for that role. That's what we want to do. Put your time and energy in so you can scale and not replace. Now let's talk about our assessment, the one that we've chose to use, the Acumax Index. Okay. Why did we pick the Acumax Index? There's a couple of different reasons. So those of you that have been clients for a while, you know that we had an assessment tool called Predictive Index. And, uh, and we, we loved Predictive Index. Okay. Um, but we had to make a shift over to Acumax, and let me just explain why here. Um, it's practically the same. Acumax is practically the same with some additional features. There's some different language we'll walk through, but it's a lot of the same as Predictive Index with some additional features. But the biggest reason was uh, flexibility. Predictive Index wasn't willing to set up a partnership with us for our small business community, and Acumax was. 
See, we think it's we feel it's important for you as our as our clients and our partners here to be able to utilize tools like this to help grow your business. And we found with with PI, with predictive index and some other assessment tools, the licenses generally run around six thousand a year or more. And we basically just said, listen, small business owners need these tools and they can't afford that. So we negotiated for our size of 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 clients and partners, and we negotiated one hundred and eighty dollars a month with a six month minimum and Acumax was happy to help and jump at that partnership. Okay, we've had several businesses within the company already take advantage of this. So the way it works is you get 10 of these assessments for free each year and we came up with this based on the average size of the companies that we work with and it should allow you to get your executive team or your closest employees surveyed. Beyond 10, if you, if you have a team larger than 10, if you're recruiting constantly if you need more than 10 of these a year you need to upgrade and we'll talk about that later and how to do that but it's 180 dollars a month and you get some additional uh value and some awesome tools out of this that we'll talk about later let's talk about the tools that everybody gets with this assessment right now the tools and the value that that this provides so first and foremost uh, you you all shared this in the chat, when you talked about culture, when you talked about finding the right people, when you talked about people that uh, have the similar work style, similar work ethics, that's the value of a tool like this, especially common language and common forms of measurement. Remember, it's, these tools aren't about judgment. It's about measurement. Consistency is what allows you to grow, okay? And that's where that's where uh, this differs, okay? if if, if you go through a list of interviews and you come down to a couple different candidates, it may come down to one or two factors. So as you look at an assessment, you may pick the person that's the most impatient in their profile because that's the person that wants the results the quickest. Okay, it's a way, it's a consistent way of looking at two different people and going, this is how they perform. Okay, I was a part of the original buildup at Cultivate when we first started going, when we first had a room full of eight to 10 people that we were gonna launch the business with. And this training was brought in for us with Predictive Index right away. We had an assessment from day one because our leadership team knew that when we brought people in and we watched them scale, we watched them grow, we needed to know what they were doing and who they were, what was in their DNA. So we knew how to go out and replicate that. And how do we separate and find the strategist from the doer and how do we place them in the right role okay and that's the value of this tool it helps you generate employ profiles you get to harness their natural wiring you get to survey your entire organization you understand how people work better together and you get to create wiring profiling for every position that you have you get to create that glove for every position and know which components make up that position and who what type of person are we going to go out and look for now you get to learn the driving factors you get to see how engaged individuals are you get to see how much stress has been in their life in the previous 90 to 120 day period you get to see how well they're managed and how well they're motivated and then ultimately are they truly a good fit for the role and this helps you separate out that, hey, I really like this person. I like a lot of people. It doesn't mean that they should always work for you in that role. This helps remove some of that, uh, some of that uh, subjectivity there. Remote employee engagement, learning how employees best thrive in a remote environment, learning how to engage employees in a remote environment, what you can expect from that employee in this remote environment, and then how to extract the most productive version of each employee and then ultimately it increases team morale you can experience more growth more productivity expand your revenue and develop that deep culture that you always wanted so i'm gonna i'm gonna switch gears here we're gonna move into uh reading uh reading the charts here so i'm gonna spend maybe the, the next six or seven minutes on this and how to read these charts so those of you that have seen them um and those of you that have used predictive index before i'm gonna connect the two uh, so you kind of know what's changed and what's the same. So if you've never seen this assessment before, this is this will all be new to you here. So this is what uh, this is what one of the graphs looks like. So now on the left here, you're going to see this RL with a number. RL stands for response level, and this indicates how many psychometric words the uh, the user responded to on the test. So just so you know, a survey goes out to the user. It's five minutes. It's two questions. They select the list of, uh, of, of psychometric words uh, for these two questions. And the RL gives you the response level of how many words they responded to. Um, the, the green line in the middle, this is the center line. This splits what we call the high and low 
drives. Drives are the A, B, C, D that you see on the right. Drives to the right of the green line are considered high. Drives to the left of the green line are considered low. Neither are bad, high or low. It all just actually helps you understand who that person is. And then, um, and that's very similar to uh, what Predictive Index had as well. And then here's uh, the, the new one here is uh, the L, W, and N that you see here. And this stands for like, want, need. And so this tells you, does this individual, you know, like this? Do they want it or do they need it as it relates to the drive? And so as we talk about the drives, you'll start to understand that a little bit more. But it basically lets you know the importance and emphasis that's put on each one of those drives. You can see the farther it extends from the green line, the more of a need it is. The closer to the green line it is, the more of a like that it is. So the drives themselves, the A, B, C, D, very similar to predictive index. Uh, here we use slightly different language. A stands for autonomy. This is the idea flow of an individual. B stands for communication. This is their thought processing, you know, extroversion, introversion, their thought processing, how they handle uh, social situations and take it in. C, patience. This is their work style. And then D, certainty, this is their information uh, information channel, information drive. So I'll give you some examples of each one of these here. So the A drive, okay, you can see this up on the top with the red arrow there. Um, if they have a low A, if they're to the left of the green line, they uh, they, they desire team orientation. Uh, they, they view the best idea is the best. Uh, they like to minimize conflict. Whereas on uh, if they're a high A to the right of the green line, they have more of a my way orientation, more of that dominant uh, assertive piece. They want their thumbprint on the ideas and plans. So it's not just, hey, let's take the best idea. They want the influence over the ideas and plans. And they also accept and they give conflict. Now, again, neither of these are bad, okay? But it depends on what person you want for the role. Do you need somebody who's a high A or a low A? For the B drive, this is our communication, okay? If they're a low B, they like to internalize, okay? They give response after a thought is complete and they prefer some alone time. They need that because that's what recharges them. If they're a high B, they externalize. That's how that's how they get their energy by being out. They thrive on that face-to-face -face interaction and they desire response. Okay. They want uh they want that back and forth. And some people can uh turn up this channel and turn it down based on uh the situation they're in, which we'll talk about. But this shows you who they are at the core, okay? So you know where they're pulling their energy from. So if somebody is a low B and they're being very, very social in a setting, know that at the end of that day, they probably go back to their room completely drained and mentally exhausted, and they're gonna need some recharge time because they're fighting who they are at the core, which is a low B. This drive, this is patience. A low C has a shorter attention span. They need to keep moving. They want to keep, you know, they want to keep moving on to the next thing and keep moving through ideas quicker. So again, quick bullet points are the easiest way to get information to them. They accept pressure. They're, they're okay under pressure. And uh, they're a quick decision maker. They're not going to let grass grow under their feet. They're going to they're gonna move because they want action. High C, this is a longer term focused person. Okay, they want to take their time. They want to understand it. They want to minimize their pressure. They, they don't want to be fighting at the 11th hour all the time. And they're a deliberate decision maker. Okay, if they make a decision, it's based on, it's based on taking it in, based on very, uh, uh, very high intentionality. Okay, again, nothing wrong with being lower patient or higher patient. It depends on the role you need. If you're hiring sales, it's great to have somebody who accepts pressure as a quick decision maker who's, who has that urgency behind them. Okay, if you have somebody that's in a data analytical role, probably want more of a high C, somebody that can minimize pressure, make the right decisions based on focusing on certain items for a long time. Okay, and there's a multitude of factors that go into low C, high C, and all these other uh, drives. I'm just summarizing a couple for you. Um, last two pieces here: the D drive, low D. Okay, the way you can communicate with a with a with a low D summary sheet. Again, bullet points. They're flexible. They like to pick and choose their method of proof. Whereas a high D, they want a lot of detail. Some of you out there, uh, you know, I, I bet you a lot of you out there are low uh, lower D. Um, 
know, just give me the bullet points. And when somebody starts feeding you all these details, you're like, I get it. Just get to the point. Probably even some of you are doing that on this webinar as I'm talking right now. Like, come on, Vince, get to it. I get it. I'm more of a high D. I provide a lot of details. Uh, they're very structured. And a high D also has wants proof from a valued subject matter expert. They're not just willing to kind of pick and choose their proof. I want it. I want this proof. And, you know, nine out of 10 dentists recommend. I want that. Tilt factor. If you used predictive index and you were familiar with the uh, with the E factor, okay, the subjective versus objective, this is very similar. Only it's called the tilt factor instead of the E factor here. And again, if you're to the left of the green line, you make decisions based in a subjective manner. If you're to the right of the green line, you make decisions based in an objective manner, traditionally speaking. So subjective, you're willing to just kind of go with your gut. Objective, you need facts, you want proof, you want logic, you want to analyze it. So that's the biggest difference uh, in this. For the natural self-graph, there's a couple different graphs here. Natural self-graphs, this is a person's wiring. This is their DNA. This is the environment that they best thrive in and how a person accepts ideas, processes thoughts, how they prefer to work, and the level of information that's necessary for them to make a decision. This is who they are at the core. This won't change even if they can pivot some behaviors, know that they're fighting against their own internal instincts at this point. The second graph is called the adjusted self graph. And this is a reflection on how an individual adjusts to their demands and the stress levels of the past 90 to 120 day period. So if you wanted to every four months, if you wanted to give somebody a new assessment, the adjusted self graph would be the one that updates not the uh, not the self not the natural self graph. So you would see based every 120 days kind of where they're at in their environment. 70% of the time it's based on how they adjust to their work environment. 30% of the time it brings in their personal life into consideration, and it gives you their motivators. Are they energized, de-energized, or neutral? And you can see that is reflected here at the bottom left of the graph. The adjusted self, just so we know, it's not unusual to have a lot of de-energized individuals in your organization. So if you see de-energized, don't think that's a bad reflection on you. It's caused by the fact that it's uh, it's not readily apparent what type and degree of motivators people need without an understanding of their wiring. Meaning we bring people in and we don't know how we should lead them because we haven't given them the assessment. So we're kind of leading them the way we've always done it. And that could de-energize them until we start to understand who they are in the best way to lead them. People don't have this motivator need stamped on their forehead at all times. So when we talk about how to use this tool, I'm going to start to bring in our uh, subject matter experts here in a minute, but uh, I want to launch a poll real quick just to get a feel for the room. Are you more interested in using these type of assessments for recruiting, for leadership, or for both? Go ahead and fill out the poll real quick. As you're filling out the poll, Autumn, if you want to come jump on the video with me, I'm going to ask you a couple questions here based on recruiting. Hey, Autumn, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. So uh, we, we've got uh, a wide range of, of individuals who want to use it for recruiting, for leadership, and then uh, you know the majority of the room said for both. So you and I are going to talk about uh, recruiting at first. So uh, everyone, this is Autumn Joyce. Autumn is uh, is one of our rock star advisors over here at Cultivate Advisors with uh, a great background in recruiting and uh, really dove into these indexes to use them for recruiting. So I'm going to ask Autumn some questions here. If you think of some questions, uh, I want you just to jot them down. We're going to do a Q&A at the end as well if we have some time. So keep your questions coming, but I'm going to just go with a, a standard list of questions right now. So Autumn, first question is, uh, why would an employer want to use the Acumax index? Um, well, I find that um the Acumax index really, help, really any index helps employers hone in on exactly what they're looking for so that their recruitment process can become more data driven um, rather than uh, more on the subjective side, which I find a lot of people lean toward, like I really like this person or I get along with this person. Um, so it, it drives that data rather than the feeling. Got it. Yeah, that goes that goes back to uh, we created this glove. We need the data so we know what hand goes into that glove versus I like this person, then the glove doesn't fit. So great. 
Um, at what point in the uh, in the recruitment process would you want to utilize this tool? So I like to utilize tools at three different points in the process. Um, the first one being um, the creation of the role or when you're looking at um, building the job description or reviewing the job description if you're hiring um, to replace someone. Um, as you're building that hiring matrix to identify exactly who you are looking for. Um, the second time I would use it is during um, once someone has applied for the role. As a first step, I would give them the index immediately so that I wouldn't want to be wasting their time or mine going through phone screens and interviews with someone that really didn't fit um, the profile I was looking for. And the third time I would use it is when I was deep inside um, during the interview process, understanding which types of questions I should be asking and reflecting back on their index to make sure that I'm really honing in on the difference between what they want me to see about them and what I really need to understand about them. Um, because just like you showed about your LinkedIn profile, that's yeah. really real. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's real. I know. Uh, I know Casey was uh, watching those slides, going, "Yep, yep, no, that that's what happened." Yeah. Uh, it's just outgoing. He's just it's for, um, so yeah. So I'm hearing. Uh, I'm hearing we use it for the profiling feature that we talked about, and then you're using it as this filtering feature up front when you're screening individuals. So you're kind of just looking at this, going like, "Can't even begin to waste our time here," and by by you by utilizing it in this screening and filtering process you actually get to remove a lot of that subjectivity that you would have of going hey i liked that person because you're not even giving yourself a chance to to know that person to like them you're filtering it out and so now yeah. the people you're interviewing are more niche down awesome um and so uh, how do you use it during the position creation process so during the position creation process, um, when once you've identified in the job description the skill sets and attributes of a candidate that you're looking for, you can go back and um, visit the index and actually create the ideal person that you are looking for, the, per the personality type. Um, and so you know if that person needs to be outgoing or not so much, someone that is more team oriented or more independent. Um, so you can identify those traits even before you get to um, actually interviewing people. Uh, the second piece really to that is then when you go to design what I would call the hiring matrix, which is actually like a data driven um, questionnaire that assigns value to different answers during the interview process, you can um, build that based off of the personality that you're looking for. That's that's great. So, uh, and then when you want to use it for the initial screening, how do you use this for the initial screening as well? Well, the initial screening, when someone applies for a role um, and their, their resume seems as though that they're someone who would be a fit, like their, their experience, their skill set, their background is a fit, um, and that you've looked at their LinkedIn profile and done a little bit of research, but just haven't made any real contact with them yet. Typically, my first point of contact is to ask them to take the assessment. Um, and that way, I'm not spending, you know, the next half an hour, 45 minutes during initial phone screen, because um, that time is valuable. And especially when you're, you know, you have a role where there could be 20, 30, 40 applicants. Um, that's a lot of time to spend to phone screen without really knowing if they um, meet that personality profile that you're looking for. Yeah. So when we laid out that recruiting, um, you know, table up front, we kind of broke it down a list of names and calling and voicemails and all that. When you start to add up those hours and you go, you know, using a tool like this, $180 a month versus spending the time going through those, you know, it, you come out better, but it also helps. It really just helps you find more of the niche that you set out for to begin with, because, uh, you know, not all of us, let's just face it, not all of us are amazing at recruiting and using a tool like this is that unbiased third party in the room that can really help us uh, take it to the next level and help us make some better decisions. You know, it also helps as a filter really too when people um, that you know give referrals. Um, so like you have that connection already. So you you kind of want to jump them through the process because they they come recommended. But that also tips you into that more subjective side of things. Whereas like just giving them the the index, the assessment straight off the bat, just establishes a data point. 
That's great. And then uh, last question, we have about one minute left here. If uh, if the candidates index matches the ideal profile and mm -hmm. you want to move on to like the next phase of the interview process, can the index continue to be helpful at that point? Absolutely. What I really liked about the Acumax versus the predictive index is, is that there's a segment that actually tells you, um, it gives you indicators of what types of questions that you should be asking them during the interview process, um, which I think is really helpful. I think that a lot of employers, um, hiring managers really struggle with just like how does somebody really interview to get to the, to really what's underneath that first initial response. Um, yeah. So that, that's one piece that I really like about it. I think too that when someone is giving you a response to a, a question that you've asked and it seems to go exactly opposite of what their index is telling you, that gives me the indication that I need to dive a lot deeper because there's something there that they're not um, telling me up front. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it definitely uh, sets off uh, the red alarm that lets you know, hey, I can dig in here. Maybe I can skip over this next piece and yeah. puts the, the right time into the right pieces. Awesome. Autumn, I, I appreciate you coming on for a few minutes. Um, if Thank we have you. time at the end, we're going to do a, a quick Q&A with the group. So if I call you back at the end, just come back out on video for us, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, Autumn. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Autumn. I appreciate it. You can hear how, uh, how this can help in recruiting. Let's shift gears and talk about leadership, and then we'll come back and bridge the gap on, on both of these. So I'd like to uh, bring Jeremy around to come out here with me. J-Row, why don't you come uh, join me on video out here? Hey, hey. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, standing with your head through the ceiling, it looks like, on, uh, on the video today. Appreciate yep. that. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, so Jeremy's uh, one of the senior advisors over here at, uh, at, at Cultivate Advisors, and uh, him and I have... Uh, taught different leadership sessions with uh, with assessments. So I wanted to bring him out here and have him share. So Jeremy, I've got some questions I'm gonna ask you as well. We have about uh, nine to 10 minutes. Awesome. Okay, um, so you've built a team, you've hired a team. How do you now use this tool to lead and manage? Yeah, I, you know, it, it, all the stuff that you and Autumn were just talking about is so key, but that was that was the early work. Now it begins, right? And so we have all this data on our team and on our teammates. And there are a lot of capacities and uses of that. So first and foremost, I like to have my clients integrate uh, these types of tools, whether it's Acumax or whatever, into annual check-ins and other regular reviews. So you're thinking about what role a person's in, how they're energized or de-energized. Ultimately, you know, we want to look for those perfect fits. We want to have the glove be perfect, but things evolve. Things are going to change. And as we've talked about, there's also who you are, your core DNA, and who you are in this moment. And in this moment, we're all in this weird situation where we have our heads through the roof because we didn't want to have too much light in our faces because of COVID, right? And so we are all evolving and reacting in the environment differently. And this is a great tool to actually get back and get to some of the objective things about who people are at their core and use it just to check in on sort of their mental health, how they're doing, how we can help support them. So there's sort of that individual piece and ongoing and growth. There's internal mobility, which is almost like re-recruiting your own staff as roles change, as, as opportunities shift. You know, we, we at Cultivate are obviously very early in our journey. and We've had uh, a lot of our leaders switch into different roles and that type of thing. You wanna go back to the index in that when you're looking at this stuff and someone raises their hand and says, hey, I wanna do this. You wanna make sure that's a good fit for them. You don't wanna set them up for failure. You wanna make sure that you're giving them the pieces that they need. And then team. Team, this is a huge thing for creating visibility, transparency, setting people up for success, healthy conflict, et cetera. All the data shows that diversity, and this is all kinds of diversity, diversity on teams makes teams much more successful. And so if you put a team together that has all the same prototype in terms of Acumax, all the same background, et cetera, they're gonna get along pretty well. They're not gonna get very far. The ideas won't be that divine, their strengths will be strong, but their weaknesses will be glaring as well. So setting your team up for that diversity, but also making clear to them, hey, here's where you're gonna have some tension, right? We've got a, a member of our team, Siobhan, she doesn't wanna socialize that much like Vince, right? And so we don't wanna throw her in a situation where she's stuck talking to people all the time. COVID's probably been wonderful for her. She's probably the happier she's ever been with our company, right? But that, that kind of situation, obviously extroversion, introversion is something that's easier to talk about because we all understand it in a deeper way. But things like around structure, how you make decisions, or how independent or collaborative you are, you want teammates to understand those things so that they approach each other in a way that's going to be more likely to get a good outcome and to use conflict in a healthy way to get to better results. That's awesome. I, uh, I Two things. One, um, 
I know Siobhan, and just uh, you mentioning her name, even though she's home alone, I'm sure she turned uh, beet red just at uh, hearing her name. And I'm sure it just happened again when I did it. So uh, you're welcome, Siobhan. Two, what, what stuck out to me the most here that uh, that everybody, uh, you know, if you haven't thought about this before, utilize, uh, you know, write this down, re-recruiting your own staff. What a great phrase and what, what a great concept to consider. Oftentimes I, we do what, what I call a, a attritional promotion where somebody left and somebody has to fill that role. And it's like, hey, you were the top ranked you know, salesperson, so you're just going in this role. And we don't do that vetting out to go, is this the right role for them? Do they have the right, because they were the best here, are they gonna be the best there? And uh, you know, so there's, how do we get people to, to be ready to take that next step? But there's also going, let's just vet it to make sure that we don't take somebody who was a rock star here and put them in a losing proposition over here because we didn't do the homework when we had the tools right in front of us. So re-recruiting your own staff is a great phrase. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so when we talk about like, how can this tool help leaders lead? Can you talk to me more about like the fits for the role, how people are energized and, and things of that nature? Yeah, I, I find myself, uh, you know, with, with my Cultivate clients, when we're talking through people issues of any sort, right, performance has shifted, they're telling us, you know, communicating that they need to change, whatever that is, I actually say, let's, let's take a time out and, and visit, visit the chart again, right? Let's, let's think about who this person is, because things happen, right? Again, I, you know, the COVID example is such an easy one, but there are all these factors flying around that make all of us as individuals, both leaders as an, and employees, start to feel like we might need a change or a shift or something like that. And it's important still to go back and figure out and remind ourselves who are people at their, their, their sort of core and what motivates them. Because there may be these external factors that are driving stress way up in terms of I need to earn more. And so that individual then says, hmm, what department earns more? How can I create more impact on the company to try to ask for more money? And they're jumping to tactical solutions and they're not actually sitting down with, with their leader or decision maker and saying, hey, I have this issue that I'm trying to solve. Here are some ideas that I have, but let's think this through together. And this happens to us all the time. And as entrepreneurs, we do this all the time. We jump straight to the solution and we forget to go through the process of actually thinking about it and yeah. tying it back to the, to the economics, right? And so you all hear your cultivate advisors all the time saying, hey, let's go back to the finances. You know, let's check the numbers. Let's make sure it makes sense. It's yeah. the same thing with leadership. This is, this is the numbers when it comes to our people. Go back to it. See what's going on there. You're having a random issue with this person. You've never had an issue with them before. Might be time to go visit that and see what's going on so you can come in a little bit more open-minded and understanding what might be happening. And again, yeah. bring that all to the forefront and use it as a way to communicate with each other. Um, one of the things that I've really encouraged teams and leaders to do is to share, there, there's a chart, and I don't remember the name of it, and uh, I can pull it up before we end today to point it out to folks, but there's sort of a snapshot graphic uh, in AccuMax that, that talks about a person on a page, and it's just like four simple things for each letter that helps you understand who they are at their core. I've actually had some leaders have that sort of posted on their desk, so that when they're talking to people, they can like look at that and be like, okay, I got to remember this about the person because they've grown their teams a ton and they don't know their teams as well as they should. And, you know, there's no water cooler talk or lunches or anything like that in this environment. And so, again, just staying in touch with that and having our people stay in touch with that is just going to have a more effective journey, knowing that, again, nothing stays static. You build this job description, you do all that hard work that Autumn was describing, and then we build in a new system or something shifts with technology or whatever, and the job changed. And we didn't revisit it. And so it's, again, it's that piece of just, coming back to the numbers, and in this case, coming back to their core motivations, coming back to who they are. That's awesome. T two big things that stick out from what you said. One, um, people, uh, you know, some entrepreneurs having this, or leaders having this uh, this cheat sheet chart kind of posted to their uh, their desk. Um, I find that actually, when, when you can like call out the other person uh, on their wiring a little bit, like, hey, I know you like you thrive on some extroversion, so I want to give you that opportunity by putting you on this project. When you yeah. can tie it in, without sounding judgy, when you can tie it into their needs and their motivations, it actually validates that they've been heard or they've been listened to or they've been observed, and it actually excites people. So I think that's a great uh, utilization of this. And then two, um, you don't always have to jump to a solution. Sometimes you have to jump to the strategy. So we talked about you create this glove. Don't just jump to the solution of sticking any old hand in it. Like 
get to back to the strategy, find out which hand belongs in it. So uh, last question I have for you, Jeremy, before I bring you back for Q&A in a little bit. Can, sure. uh, can Acumax help me out with the ladies? <laughs> Vince had me write up the questions, and I added one that I uh, hoped would make him laugh, and then he brings it up in front of everyone. Can Acumax help you with the ladies? It probably, Acumax probably could help you uh, with, it, with introspection and knowing yeah. how you might be perceived by others. Um, so I do think this can help you with your romantic life. Um, probably not you, Vince. You're kind of beyond hope, but uh, the general person could certainly get uh, get some benefit out of this. That's uh, that's the answer I was waiting for. I I, uh, I knocked you on the, on the ceiling. I was waiting for you to hit it right back at me and say nothing can help me out. So I appreciate that, Jeremy. We'll see you in maybe about another ten minutes or so. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, and just to validate what, what Melissa actually just wrote into the chat, she's utilized this assessment tool with uh, husband and wife teams. It's been a great tool. It's actually uh, it's actually great for decision making as well. So like um, knowing like, hey, there's there's a husband here knowing what is what his wife's decision or rationale is as well, because that's who he has to go home and make decisions with and talk with and and vice versa. So sometimes it is great to use uh, in that team environment, like Melissa said, with a with a spouse or a significant other as well, if you feel there's going to be decision-making friction or energy uh, channeled a different route. So thank you, Autumn. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. So I just want to talk about for just about five minutes here, how to get your own account and why you should. Uh, this is something that we, we, we believe in. This is not about just, hey, let's go upgrade our clients. This is going, hey, we have a we have a solution that's really helped our company scale and grow over the years. And we've watched what it's done for other uh, clients that we've brought this in for. And we just, we were really excited two months ago when we were able to, to work out this deal with Acumax to where finally we had a solution to go bring to all of our clients versus just saying, sorry, if you don't have six grand plus a year, you can't use this. So uh, who really needs this tool? Okay, this isn't for everybody, but here's how you know if, if there's a, a checkbox here where you might need this. Okay, do you need more than 10 assessments per year right now? That's question number one, because we're, we're providing 10 with this service. By being a member of Cultivate, one of your perks is you get 10 of these per year. Do you need more than 10? Does it, when I say you only have 10, does that make you feel like, ooh, that's not enough? If so, we should probably just have another conversation about what this could look like for you. Do you have a team of 10 or more? Okay, that's going to grow. You should at least have your team surveyed right now so you have a benchmark. Again, this is about measurement and consistency moving forward. So if you have a team of 10 or more, we should have a conversation. And are you actively recruiting? Okay, if you're actively recruiting and you're in the weeds and it's pulling in your time and pulling in your energy, we should talk about it. But also, just so we know what we're, who we're hiring and how it's gonna help us scale and how we can measure this moving forward. If, if either any of these three bullet points uh, sticks out to you, let's just have a conversation afterwards. No high pressure. Let's just talk through and figure out, do we meet the need here? Um, Earl asked a question here. Does the 10 expire on the calendar year or, or year end since we just started? So good question. Uh, the 10 resets as of January 1st. So we just did it. We just did a calendar year. So right now, October to December, everybody had 10. So it gives you a little extra boost for this year. Starting in Jan 1, you have 10 more. So as far as what you get, if you decide you want to upgrade your account, you get your own system. You get your own login to the Acumax portal with all the backend tools, all the backend videos. Yeah, listen to Jeremy, go nuts. Use your assessments this year. Use them on your friends. Use them on your family. Use them right now. Use your 10 up to make sure that you get to see just how awesome of a tool this is. But if you want to utilize this and you want to upgrade, it's uh, $180 a month uh, USD um, and all the tools you get. Uh, you get all of the recruiting tools. Okay, this is not available in the basic package, but you get all these recruiting tools. I'll show you what a few of them are. You get cognitive reporting as well. So if you want to test some of these cognitive abilities before you hire them, if you have a role where that's important to you, you get that reporting as well. You get 26 pages worth of reporting on every individual that takes this. Five minutes of a survey two questions, you get 26 pages of insight into that individual. Uh, you get to create profiles for different jobs and positions, and you get to compare profiles. Kate, I believe you asked that earlier. Can we compare the leadership? You can compare anybody in the organization. You compare groups and teams to different teams in the organization and a whole lot more. So again, if you want a demo on it, we can we can talk through this. I can walk you through everything that comes into it. But here, uh, it's a little a little hard to read, but here's all the different reports available. 
you get drive intensity, engagement, coaching, impactful onboarding. How do you bring on somebody based on where uh, their profile is? How do you interview somebody based on where their profile is? And you get a variety of these extra wirings, management, sales style, uh, goals and feedback, remote engagement, uh, a variety of these. So let me just show you a couple different upgrade examples, impactful onboarding, you know, wire specific onboarding based on their drive. And then over to the right here, uh, this is the one that, uh, that Autumn was talking about, drive-based interview questions. So if you have somebody that's a low A, it provides you with interview questions and in-depth questions based on each one of those so you know how to really start to dive in deep. So that's what Autumn was saying. If they give you an answer that contradicts maybe their profile a bit, you've got so many additional questions to ask based on that drive. So let's just say, for, for example, if you have somebody that uh, – you know, that meets your B, C, and D criteria, but the A is off slightly, you can interview based on A now and go, is this a, is this a deal breaker for me? Or after I vetted out with these deep dive, A drive interview questions, did I get to a point where I felt comfortable going, maybe if that drive was off, I could, uh, I could still work with that individual. So those are decisions you would make, but this is, uh, this is how we can interact and use this. So um, let me launch a poll. Uh, just to get a, a pulse on the room, we're not going to share this outwardly. I just want to know for myself, how do you plan to move forward with the AccuMax perk? So if we're going to launch this poll, uh, you want to use your 10 free assessments and then you'll make a decision. Maybe you'd like to schedule a call just to learn a little bit more, or you're already going, hey, I want to I wanna sign up for the upgrade. I know I'm going to need more than 10 of these. So let's take that poll real quick. Give it about uh, 30 more seconds. Let everyone get an answer in here. I see some people want to want to upgrade already. Some people want to just take the 10 and learn a little bit more as we go. This is great. I'm going to let you keep filling out the poll here. Um, if you just have a, an extra question or two, uh, you can reach out to me. If you decide after this, hey, I want to I want to learn more. I want to just set up a call with Vince to not necessarily upgrade, but just dive into it and see what this is really all about. Uh, contact me, Vince, at CultivateAdvisors.com. Let's stop finding the wrong fit. Start finding the right fit for all the time and energy that you are putting in. So uh, let's bring out Autumn and Jeremy. Let's bring them back here. I want to spend a few minutes with them, and I want to uh, I want to pull in questions from the group. So uh, I changed my setting for you, Vince. Oh, look at that. Nice. Perfect, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So Autumn, Jeremy, here's how we'll do it. Uh, I'll get a question and then I'll direct it to you just so we can uh, stay moderated uh, properly here. So utilizing the, uh, the chat room here, what questions do you have as it relates to recruiting or leadership? And uh, yeah, Autumn and Jeremy, if you're not talking, just go on mute at, at the moment so we don't have a bunch of cross chatter here. So let's just give it uh, 30 seconds and uh, see what questions uh, the group has for you. Then I'll direct them. And uh, advisors, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in as well. So. Acumax indexes, but different personas and stuff um, earlier in the chat. So that might be good to talk about too. Yep, I'll take a, I'll take a scroll up. I appreciate it. Well, while we're waiting for uh, for a question or two, in case uh, there are any, uh, Autumn, do you have anything additional you wanted to share after uh, after we kind of went through uh, the rest of this? My first um, client upgrade, and so we're actually using it um, to go through the recruitment process right now for the first time, um, which is pretty exciting. So. Um, I'll be really interested to work through the whole thing and apply this this index um, as we you know move past the predictive index. But so far, I my favorite part about it is the the part where you can actually build the the um, personality set that you're looking for ahead of time. Um, I think it's really helpful personally. That's great. Yep, um, excited to see also how uh, how it goes and how the, how your client uh, enjoys this as well. So any feedback you have that we could share out with the group after would be great as well. 
<clears throat> uh, Lawrence asked a question, have all the advisors been trained on how to use this or are certain more specialized in this area? Uh, Lawrence, great question. All the advisors have been trained on this tool and all the advisors were also trained on predictive index. So they have a vast amount of experience as it relates to using an assessment. We utilize this assessment for every prospect and every client we have and, uh, and members of their team. So we're constantly in the trenches in these assessments. Um, so uh, whoever, whoever your current advisor is, I'm sure they're well versed in this as well. Um, Nancy asked a question, can you get typical profiles for different set positions? Uh, yes, you can. Jeremy, do you want to elaborate on this a little bit? Picking up a little bit. Why don't you go ahead? I'm got to fix something here. Yeah, no, no problem. I'll take it. So, uh, yeah. Nancy, yes, you can you can create the different type of profile and different type of position. You can name it. It's nice and organized and structured in the system. And then you can go out and you can send, you know, uh, you know, uh, bring, you know, this assessment's going out based on this position profile to this individual. So it gives you feedback on that position profile as well and lets you know, are they a good fit? Are they not a good fit in, uh, you know, less judgmental terms than that, but it lets you know, it gives you some great insights into that. Um, Melissa, the question around Acumax Decipher, someone has answered with their business persona or personal persona is... Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm reading that uh, properly or not, but uh, I don't know if that's a question or not. But uh, Jeremy, anything else on uh, leadership you want to share before we uh, before we wrap up in here? That report that I was referencing. Um, okay. Yeah, so you you all can find it um, in the tool. It's called How to Best Interact With, um, and it literally is a snapshot um, with very simple things of how they like. It's like very simple phrase for each letter. Uh, and just such an easy snapshot, especially when teams are meeting one another. Uh, just a great introduction tool. And again, in a world where we're physically operating together, you could foresee that being on the side of someone's desk or cubicle or on a name tag for group meetings that just helps people see your preferences very easily. Awesome. Uh, Jeremy, I'll, I, will, uh, I will guide them as to where to go for that uh, in, a, in a moment as well. Um, last two questions here. Uh, Lawrence asked, are there any gaps in this assessment that you would recommend other apps pairing with this? Or are there any areas that you would not recommend using this tool that is often mismanaged? Uh, Autumn, do you have any feedback on that? So far, I, I have another client who I just gave this um, index to. She is well versed in a lot of different index tools out there. And so the idea was to compare them and to see where this one um, met with the others. And so far, we haven't found any gaps with this. Um, I actually think, agree with you, Vince, that this is more in depth than the predictive index. Um, I think it gives you a lot more information and a lot more tools to use it with. So, so far, no gaps. Um, we'll see. Awesome. And then, uh, Jeremy, uh, let me come to you with this final question here. Uh, from Riva is, uh, can the assessment tell if someone has answered with their personal persona or their business persona and how does it reconcile the two? So what, what I've always loved about uh, these indexes, um, no matter which one, is that, and, and I don't know the last time you, you looked at one, Riva, but ultimately they're done in such a neutral way that you wouldn't know how to try to game it if you were trying to say, go for a sales role when you know that you're just not that type of person. And so um, I, I think the way it asks questions in terms of how you perceive yourself or how others might think about you is done in such a neutral way that we don't believe, we believe it gets to sort of an average of who you are and who you are, your DNA, and not that there's like a masked version of you. And that's part of why the tool's powerful is because it's very easy to put on a mask and sort of assume what people want to hear just based on their body language and how they're responding or even how a question is phrased. But these are just such open-ended, just pick words that you almost resonate with, um, that it's really supposed to play through some of that. Now, obviously, there's always complexity of where people are at in terms of their own stress and desperation and just the environmental factors. And that's why they have the two different charts of sort of who you really are and identify with and who you kind of feel you need to be. And so that's some of how it deals with perhaps discrepancy or tension around who you think you need to be in the world. Um, but it, it, it's our firm belief that the way this is done is that it nets out with, with consistency and using synonyms, et cetera, 
anything where a person might be trying to game uh, creation of a persona um, while taking it. Yep, that's a great answer, Jeremy. Yeah, with the, with the two questions and then the choices you have to make, we, we can also see how long it takes someone to take the assessment. And there's some different like industry standard uh, triggers based on how long or short they take, how many words they do or don't pick. We can kind of understand like, with somebody just kind of breezing through it, not paying attention or not, there's some triggers behind the scenes that help you know some of that as well. My finding in the past five years of using an assessment like this, uh, I haven't seen anybody where it's been a red flag going, oh, somebody was trying to game it. Um, and the best part about this system is if you give it to somebody to take again and they already kind of know the flow and the order of the questions, the only thing, the only chart it will update is their second self-adjusted chart, which just shows you the previous 90 to 120 days. It will never readjust or recalculate their DNA, which predictive index actually did, uh, which became confusing. So if you took it twice, you could wind up with two different DNAs. This keeps it consistent and helps you understand like this is their wiring, this isn't gonna change. So thank you, Jeremy, thank you, Autumn, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for answering all these questions. So let's move on here uh, as we wrap up in the final five minutes. Uh, what's one or two items that are sticking with you from this, just so we can capture some learning, utilize the chat. What are one or two things that uh, that you got from this as it relates to recruiting or leadership or assessments in general that uh, that you want to remember and you want to apply or you want to utilize going forward? So for me, it was re-recruiting your own staff. I know that uh, really is sticking with me. So uh, utilize the chat, pop those takeaways in there. While you're doing that, I'm going to move through some uh, some updates that are coming up in here. Um, whether, whether you want to upgrade or not, you should still utilize the, the 10 that are given to you. This is a great perk of being a, uh, a Cultivate uh, client. Um, yeah, Carlin, you asked, uh, can we share the graph? Uh, I will show you, uh, what, 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 let me know what graph you're referring to, the one that Jeremy was talking about or the recruiting graph. Let me, let me know which one you're talking about. Either way, we'll make sure you can get it. Um, but add, add this item, add uh, the Acumax to your roadmap and work on it with your advisor. Bring the Acumax uh, results to your advisor, let them work with you, let them see they're, they're well trained in this. So ensure that you bring them into the mix. If, uh, if you want to watch this, uh, this webinar again, you want to go back and take some of the learning points back, just go to our courses page in our community, go to the CEO webinars and you can see all of our webinars there. And this one will be up there within, uh, within 48 hours as well. Getting additional training. So for those of you that just want to learn more about Acumax in general, we have, a, we have a whole course that goes into everything I talked about today and more in depth in our courses. So go, go to our courses, click on Acumax, and you can click on any part of the training. It's broken down. It's very user-friendly, and there's tons of great data that will really help you understand that. Laura, if you took the predictive index, um, if you have it, just send it over to me or send it to your advisor, or just drop me an email. And once I, uh, once I know your email, I can go pull the predictive index and get it converted over to Acumax for you. So just uh, make sure you do that. I'll give you my email again at the end here or Paige can drop it into the chat. To take advantage of the Acumax Index perk or any of our perks, go to our perks page. You'll see Acumax assessment right in the middle there. Click on that. And here's what's coming up uh, next, just so we know. January 21st is our next CEO webinar. And what it's gonna be about, we don't know yet because we're shifting formats into the new year. We want your involvement. You show up month after month. We want to make sure that we're allowing you to have a say in what's being talked about. So you're going to choose the topic. I'll launch a poll in a minute, not just yet. Um, and on February 4th, we're going to start speed networking. Okay, so we're switching platforms for uh, for these webinars and networking. And I'll show you the platform in a moment as well. But what's going to happen is our events are shifting to Thursdays next year. More on that in the new year, but January 21st, you're gonna choose the topic for the webinar. February 4th, speed networking. If you came to Catapult and you were part of the speed networking and, uh, and you like that, which we heard a lot of great feedback, we're going to bring that in each month so you can connect with other members of our community. So quick poll here, what would you like to see us discuss on the January 21st webinar? Okay, is it virtual employee onboarding, financial trending and team accountability, situational leadership, or delegation and automation. We will uh, we will take your answers and whatever gets the most votes, we will run the poll on. If we have a close second, we'll bring that into the poll for the next month as well to make sure we're hitting everybody's uh, needs. So give it one more minute there. Gotta allow a couple more votes to come in.
All right. I was going to make a quick call and call, but if people are still voting, it's shifting pretty constantly here. So I'm going to let everybody uh, continue to vote. Um, and then we can we can talk about it at the end here. So just a quick show here. When you go to register for our next webinar event on the 21st in our portal and you register, you're going to be taken to this screen that you see on the right. This is called AirMeet. It's a, it's a new program. If you saw our old Catapult version hop in, it's very similar with a lot of upgraded functionality and many additional features that are just awesome. This is where our new webinar and uh, speed networking is going to be. So uh, this is where we will be launching. So when you see this come up next uh, next month, don't be surprised. And if you need to connect with me, here is uh, here is my email as well. Paige, uh, if you want to uh, share the poll, you can feel free to share this poll with the group so we can share um, what uh, the next webinar is going to be about. Looks like uh, you can see the results on this one. All right, so financial trending and team accountability is what the webinar on the 21st of uh, January is going to be about. Again, connect with me, reach out to me. And if you expressed interest in upgrading, I will reach out to you later this week or if you wanna have a conversation as well. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you, clients. Have a great and safe holiday and we'll see everybody back in the new year.